Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a video on something that I've been preparing for uh, quite a while actually, trying to get my own brain around, and that's the equalizer tool in Darktable. This is quite an advanced module, there's a lot you can do with it, but you kind of need to know what you're doing, and you need to know what each of the splines does, so I'm just going to run through um, the way that I worked out. Now keep in mind that uh, I haven't worked on any of the code of Darktable, I'm just a photographer who likes to use it, but what I've tried to do is break it down in such a way that a normal user can understand things that it's doing, and just have a more intuitive understanding of the way that it works. There are a bunch of good resources on the equalizer. Uh, the first, of course, as usual, is the user manual. It's under the correction group in here, and you scroll down, have a quick read through this. It's pretty high level, uh, but it gives you a good idea of the, of the effects that are possible with it. I'm going to go through some of these effects in this video. Uh, I've also got here a couple of other resources that I found quite useful. There's a blog post here on sharpening and uh, local contrast. I'll put a link down in the video description. And finally, the last place that I'd point to you if you're uh, interested in the technical side of things is this blog post uh, by Johannes, or Joe, and this goes through the more mathematical side, and in fact, even uh, links to the scientific papers that the equalizer is based on. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, so what I've done is I've loaded up an image in Darktable, and I've loaded up an equivalent image in the GIMP here, and I'm going to compare some of the features of the equalizer here with uh, some of the features of the Wavelet Decompose, which is a plugin for the GIMP that uses a similar uh, image processing approach. But first things first, let's talk a little bit about the user interface of the equalizer. We have three tabs here, the Luma, the Chroma, and the Sharpness. Now the Luma tab and the Chroma tab both contain two splines and the sharpness tab contains one. Now the luma is essentially the brightness of the image and the chroma is the color of the image. So like a saturation if you will. The top one gives you the ability to change the smoothness to the contrastiness of the various elements and we're going from the coarsest elements on the left to the finest elements on the right. What wavelets allow you to do is break an image down into the size of the various elements and that'll become clearer as we run through this a little more. But the top one allows you to enhance contrast of various different parts of your image and you can see that if you want to reset an individual spline then you can do that by just double clicking on it. Um, that way you can make changes to various different parts of the image and just reset the one. And if you want to reset the entire uh, module, then you can do that with the reset button as, as normal. And the bottom one allows you to sort of remove elements. And what that's generally used for is noise reduction. You can see when you mouse over it, these words change from noisy to smooth and still from coarse to fine. Now, just as an aside, the reason why the equalizer is called the equalizer is because it's very similar to the graphic equalizer that you would get in audio processing, where that you've got the highest frequency, you know, the high sounds, to the lowest frequency, the bass, the lowest sounds uh, on the left-hand side. Now, the chroma is equivalent, so we can increase the saturation of things using the uh, the chroma. Uh, and we can also remove the chroma noise using the bottom spline here. Now you'll notice as well, it's worth pointing out at this point, that you don't actually grab these handles at the bottom to pull up the bottom spline. You actually grab slightly above it and just drag up. And that pulls it up. If you, if you click at the bottom, you'll actually be moving these triangles, which moves the handles of the spline. And, you know, moving the handles of the spline is, is useful for doing sharp effects that you, if you want. That kind of thing. So let's reset back. Now again, I'll come back to the sharpness in a moment. Because the sharpness is actually to do with the effects that you've applied to the image, not to do with the overall sharpness of the image. In fact, if you move this spline, uh, you won't see any change to the image at all unless you've applied some other spline in one of the other tabs. I'm just going to quickly go through some of the presets, and this is something I recommend you do uh, yourself. We can see that we've got uh, enhanced coarse, we've got sharpening and denoising, we've got chroma denoise only. You can see that you know if you switch to the chroma tab here, we've got some denoising happening only in the in the smallest element of the image, which makes sense because that's the sort of thing that the noise is. And then we've got denoise subtle, which does both the luma here just a bit and the chroma, uh, and that makes sense because chroma noise you can push a bit more 
than you can the luminoise because your eyes are more sensitive to luminoise. Uh, I've covered that in a previous uh, denoising video. Uh, there's various different ones here, and then we have bloom, which you can see is dragged below here. So if you if you want to do that effect and really really push it, you can. And then we have clarity, which is obviously beloved by the Lightroom type people. And then there's, so that's the subtle, and this is the less subtle version. Now the other thing is we've got the mix. If you like the effect, but you want to turn it down slightly, you can do that just by, by doing the mix. And then you can also push it even more if you want. And of course we have the normal blending of that we have in every module. Now what I'm going to do is reset back to normal. And what I've done here is I've, I've loaded up the same image in the GIMP. This is just a JPEG version, uh, unprocessed of this raw file, and I'm going to do a wavelet decompose. Okay, so we now have divided the image into five wavelet scales, um, which are equivalent. I'm just going to zoom in slightly. You can see the very, very fine details on the on the B. And as I show you progressively coarser wavelet scales, you can see the progressively coarser items. Notice here, the most important thing to notice is that this is the coarse items, but you'll notice that the hairs are completely missing. The finest scale and the larger scale become essentially independent from each other, and this is the key to this technique, because it allows you to modify the different sized items within the image independently of one another, which you can't do on the full image. If you think about the wavelet scales that we have here, from the finest to the coarsest, these correspond essentially to these, this spline here, um, from the finest to the coarsest. But the other thing to keep in mind is that in Darktable, the luma and the chroma are split apart. We have uh, the brightness information and the color information separate, whereas in the GIMP, they're combined with each other. If you modify, you can see there's green here. If you modify this, you're modifying both the chroma and the luma, but they're close enough to be illustrative in this case. What I want to do is I want to apply an effect, let me zoom in on the on the B, apply an effect to say the smallest items in the image. You can see that I've now sharpened just the smallest things and I've left the large things alone. Now what does that mean in, in the GIMP here? Well let's apply an unsharp mask to just this wavelet scale too. Let me make this a bit bigger. Let me see if I can find the B here. So let's jack this up, sharpen that. Let's make the radius a bit bigger so it's all a bit more obvious, maybe not too big. Something like that. Let's make the effect nice and visible and do OK. So let's uh, let's put all of this stuff back together. This is the original image. Let me hide the original image. You can see that's sharpened there. So now, if I go back into Darktable, we can see that we essentially have the same effect. But one thing you'll notice is that the color information has not been enhanced. See how these hairs are now slightly gray compared to these? These are more yellowish. The other thing you'll notice is that the noise in the Darktable version has not been affected, whereas the noise has been made more splotchy in the GIMP version. The other thing that I'd like to point out at this point, so we can we can boost the chroma up to make it look more like the the B and the GIMP. We've now enhanced the color, uh, essentially the saturation of the fine elements. Now, if I do this even more, you'll see that that's what the the effect that it's having the saturation of those items. And you can see I'm using the mouse wheel to change the size of this this uh, circle here, and that affects how much. You know, if I have it right at the top, then that affects every handle. If I have it smaller, then it just affects the handle that I'm over. One thing I'd, I'd like to uh, point out that you can do in Darktable that you can't do in the GIMP at this point, at least I'm not aware of how to do it, is check out the edge effects. Now remember that I was saying that the, the sharpness tab is relevant only to the edge effects of the wavelet effects that the equalizer has put in. Now, if you look here, we've got an in, what, what's called an inverted gradient. We have the dark block area here, then we have a light up area, and then we have a darker area again. So it's almost like the opposite of a halo, in fact. And we can actually configure the way that the wavelets behave by using the sharpness here. Look how the we've now made this look much more natural by toning down the effect. Now, if I pull this right up, you'll notice that I have an inverse gradient that's much stronger. So Darktable has a decent approximation of that with the default spline, but the nice thing is that we can modify it if we know that we want to, to fix those edge effects. 
So you might be wondering at this point, uh, so if you've got the inverted gradients uh, or the uh, reverse gradients, what's the opposite effect that you might see if you, if you end up dragging this spline too far down? Well, this image isn't a good example, so I'll just switch over to this image for just as a, an example of something that will exhibit this problem. And let's say I want to increase uh, the contrast of this part of the image by dragging this up. Now you can already see that there's a bit of an in, uh, inverted gradient or a reverse gradient here. So if I go into the sharpness tab and drag this down, you can see that I can reduce that. And if I drag it too far, you'll already see that we're getting halos around the edge. So this is the opposite effect that you can get when uh, when the sharpness spline is dragged too low, or it might be an effect that's present and you could correct it by dragging the sharpness spline upwards in order to, to correct that there. Okay, so let's return to our original image. And let's talk a little bit about the other function that the equalizer provides, and that's noise reduction. If I zoom in a little bit on this area here, and then go into, say, the Luma tab, and bring up this bottom spline, we can see immediately, I mean, I'm not sure that you'll see it on YouTube because of the encoding, the the noise is reduced by dragging up just this right-hand part of the bottom spline. And in fact, it's worth uh, just coming in and checking out the denoising presets if you want to see how this works. But you can always see that it's drawn up more at the right-hand side than it is at the left. And that's because noise is inherently just small. I tend to like using the denoise subtle, but it's up to you what, what profile you use. And what I might just do is switch over to this image here, which I've included because it's such high noise, just to show you the power of what's, what's possible. Let me just reset this back. Now, if you look at this noise in the wall and in the, the girl's face here, I'm going to try to reduce this noise in such a way that I retain as much detail as possible. Now I'm going to start with the chroma tab here, and I'm just going to bring this up here, and you'll start to notice that the noise in this wall area here becomes more uniform, it becomes more almost black and white, if you like. And you'll notice that I can drag this up really, really high at this point. I just hit the wrong spline. Let me Let me boost this in size and drag this right to the top. You'll notice that you don't really notice that much difference. You'll notice that her face has gone kind of grey. And let me let me drag this down so that I don't include her face so much. This colour in the background here is now just being made more uniform. Let's now switch to the Luma tab. Let's play with this bottom spline again. I'll just pull this up a little. And you'll notice that the noise is already significantly reduced. But you'll see that if I drag this up on too far to the left, I'll start to lose these lines in the bricks. Those are larger features that are represented by these areas here. So if I'll, I'll just reset that by double clicking on it and I'll reduce the size of my circle by mouse wheeling up and I'll drag this up now a little bit and I'll just be a little bit careful about what I'm doing here and just really attempt not to lose the detail in the bricks but, but reduce the noise as much as I can. That looks pretty good. So now if I zoom out, you'll notice that the noise is almost completely removed from this image. And whether you know that's an acceptable loss of detail or not is, is really up to you. Um, but this, you know, this is my attempt at noise reduction, and you can compare these splines with, say, the denoise subtle and where, where those end up. But that's a pretty good, pretty good approach. Of course, at this point, you have to compare the denoising that's that's available in here with the denoising profiled and the dual dual instance approach that you can do with the denoise profiled, which uses the same tech underneath, the same wavelets, but it also offers a non-local means mode and it also knows something about your particular camera sensor at a particular ISO, so it can often be a shortcut to removing the noise. You can see more about that in my noise reduction video, actually, so I'll post a link to that below. But it's another technique that's available to you, um, and it's always good to have as many of these as possible, and it's always good to understand how they work. Okay, so one last thing before I finish up this video, and that's these dark grey bands that you may or may not have noticed in the background here. What these signify is the bands that we divided the image up into. Let me just reload this uh, image that we started with. You can see here that we have the various different wavelet scales, and you'll, you'll recall that these signify the different detail levels of, of the image. Now, 
What the dark grey bands correspond to is essentially the same thing. How is the image divided into the various wavelet scales? And what this actually indicates is that because there's no bands in this right-hand section of the image, that means that our eye can't actually see what we do in that section of the image. So let me just reset this back to normal and just make some changes in the very far right-hand side of this. Let me make this a little bit bigger. You'll see that the actual apparent difference on the image is, is nothing. And that's because uh, there's no wavelet scale that we can see at this zoom level that is that is being affected by the changes that I'm making outside of these these areas here which have bands. You'll notice that as I zoom in, these bands move to the right. So I'm zooming in now right down into the into the B, and you'll see now as I drag these changes up and down that we can actually immediately see the, the difference in the contrast. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a sense of the possibilities in this very powerful module, whether that be local contrast enhancement at various different detail levels, whether that be a reduction of noise, whether that be bloom and other artistic effects, you know, soft focus type effects that are possible. And I would really encourage you to go check out some of the resources that I'll link to below. And as always, have a look at the Darktable manual and read more deeply. See you later.